Josh Cantwell, and I want to welcome you inside of Homestead Road. And as I walk you through this video, there's really two things I want to do today. Uh, first thing I want to do is tell you about Homestead. What's great about this property is that it's sold. And I have it all mapped out right here, and I'm going to tell you all about it. But in about uh, three or four weeks from now, we'll be cashing a profit check on this deal for approximately $34,000 in profit and that's after all of our expenses now what's great about this property is that we bought this property using none of our own money none of our own cash none of our own credit we outsourced all the repairs and all the improvements to contractors who did all the work so we didn't do any of the work ourselves we launched this property using our property launch formula which generated a bunch of buzz about the house and we quickly sold the property within just three weeks and we found a retail buyer and that retail buyer is getting a bank loan. This is actually, this property is a little bit out in the country. Uh, so they're actually getting what's called a USDA loan. A uh, USDA loan is for properties that are really in the very rural parts. Uh, so we're kind of about, we're about uh, 30, 40 miles outside of the city of Cleveland right now in Ravenna Township. The second thing I want to do is talk to you about traditional versus creative real estate. Uh, this is very much what I would call a traditional real estate investment. This house was listed by Freddie Mac for $49,000. Now Freddie Mac has what's called their first look policy, which means for the first 15 days, they only allow owner occupants to bid on these homes. Well, this house needed almost $40,000 in renovations. So no homeowner was going to buy this place. This property needed a lot of work. It needed a lot of repairs on the, uh, the front deck. It needed an entire redo on the inside. So we were able to buy this property for just $41,000, okay? And then what we uh, found is that we're gonna need to put in approximately $38,000 in repairs, okay? To fix this house up just the way we wanted. So we knew we were gonna be into it for about $80,000. What we did was we had a private lender we worked with a guy who had his money already sitting at Equity Trust. Okay, and Equity Trust is a self-directed IRA company where people can roll over their retirement funds to Equity Trust and then they can direct that money out of their IRA to invest in real estate. So our private lender had uh, two loans actually. He had a, a, a first mortgage on his traditional IRA for $52,000, and he had a second mortgage from his Roth IRA for $27,000. So all combined is a total of $79,000 of funding that we got. So our investor is able to make a tax-free investment out of his IRA. We're able to buy the property using none of our own cash and none of our own credit. And we're able, we're able to buy the property. So we're the buyer and he's the lender, okay? So if you think about the money flow, the money flows out of his IRA to the title company and he's the lender. So he has a first mortgage and a second mortgage against the property. He's like the bank. We're the buyer, he's the lender out of his IRA. We bought the property for, for 41.5 and we were able to get an extra $39,000 at closing that went right into our bank account so we could use to fix up the property, okay? Uh, and we ended up using all of that $39,000 to repair the property. We immediately put the property on the market and we sold it very, very, very quickly with, in just three weeks for almost full price. Okay, we were asking 139 for this property and we were able to secure a buyer for 124, okay? So the way it shakes down, if you wanna take a look at this, okay is list price is 49 our purchase price is 41.5 cash to close was 40,500 we got a first mortgage for 52 we got a second mortgage for 27 the first was from his traditional IRA the second was from his Roth IRA so a total we got a, a funding of 79,000 the repairs here um, this is actually a typo. This is actually 38.5, not 28.5. So 38,000 in repairs. So the funding we got was 79 
equals exactly what we needed to buy and repair the property. We sold the property for 124. We gave the, the buyer a $4,000 concession. So we're gonna net 113 and we're into it for 79. So that leaves us a total profit of over $34,000 of profit to us with zero dollars of our own invested into the property. We also did none of the work, okay? So I'm excited to be at Homestead. This is the last time I'll be here because in just a couple weeks, the buyer will close and we will walk away with a $34,000 profit check, okay? Now, what we do is we're gonna give our investor approximately 15% of our profit. So 15% of $34,000 is about five grand. So we're gonna give that to our investor and we will walk away with a net net profit in our pocket of 28,000 bucks using none of our own cash, none of our own credit and without doing any of the work ourselves, okay? So when you think about real estate investing, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. There's the creative way to do real estate and there's what we call the traditional way of doing real estate. This is a very traditional, what I would call a traditional real estate deal. Because we bought it right off the MLS, we repaired it, we launched it, and we sold it quickly. Now creative real estate is fantastic as well, but it's totally different. With creative real estate, you're going to be finding off-market properties. Off-market properties, meaning uh, you know, landlords who live out of town or people who have second homes that want to unload them, or houses that are in probate, or homeowners who can't sell. When you're talking about creative real estate, you're talking about going and finding real estate deals that are not on the market, and using creative financing to get those deals. So you're either going to get, get them and wholesale them, or the seller is going to do some owner financing, or the seller is going to uh, let you take over the property subject to, or you're gonna do a lease option or a lease option assignment where there's no uh, financing involved and you're gonna find these off-market properties. So for me, I do both. We raise capital, we buy properties right off the MLS, right off of sites like uh, hudhomestore.com, Fannie, uh, Fannie Mae's site, homepath.com, Freddie Mac's site, homestops.com, hubzoo.com, auction.com, Zillow. We find properties right off of those sites and we're able to just go ahead and buy them right off the MLS using private funding. That's traditional and we do a lot of that, okay? And when we do that, we focus on making big profits, 30,000, 40,000, 60,000, $100,000 profits using our traditional investing. With creative real estate investing, it's much more difficult to do the big deals. Okay, so when I think of creative real estate investing, when I find these off-market properties and use owner financing or assignment deals, you can do deals much quicker, but the profits are not gonna be as big, okay? So my question for you in this video is, which type of real estate investing would you prefer? Would you prefer to do a deal like Homestead, right? Where we, we, we acquire it very traditionally, we fund it using private money, we launch it and sell it? Or would you prefer to be a creative real estate investor and to do quick cash deals, but deals that don't have quite as big of a profit spread, okay? So go beneath this video right now, leave us a comment, and let me know which type of real estate investor are you. Are you the creative real estate investor looking for quick cash and off-market properties, or are you the traditional real estate investor looking to buy stuff that's readily available right on the MLS or right from these websites and get private funding. Me, I like to do both, all right? So leave us a comment right beneath this video and let us know. So this has been 3954 Homestead and net net after all expenses over $29,000 of profit right in Hip National Bank. We'll talk to you soon, take care.